Driver is showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject says to hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the arches just before the gate. You want to place your vehicle in the park and go ahead and turn it off for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, park? Oh, it, it isn't parked yet. Sorry. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me, all right? What's you guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm sorry, we've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got out supplies and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hit the, the, the bump there. <laughs> I was distracting him from driving, I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? You got it, buddy. I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, you're fine. I'm going to go ahead and close your door. Okay. Why don't you come over here? SO229, I have the female that was on the passenger mm -hmm. seat separated from the male. Keys are on the hood. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, some days, I, <laughs> I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning when he was fading up the back of the van before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean, because sometimes I have OCD, and sometimes I just get really frustrated. I'm not, like, mean for him. I just, like... I guess my vibe is like I really I am like in a bad mood. And I was just saying I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well I, I hate to forget an organic juice bar, but I just quit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's oh, what okay. that's my that's job. Cool. And I just um, quit my job to travel across the country and I'm trying to start a blog. I okay. have a lot of stuff, so I've been building my website, so I've just been really stressed, and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it, so that's kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like, a, I don't know, we've just been fighting all morning, and and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because you have your OCD? He told me I needed to calm down, yeah, <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm, I'm calm all the time, and he really stresses me out, and I just... Morning. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be putting handcuffs on you. You obviously don't have any weapons. I'm going to get you into the air conditioning, let you take a breath, relax a little bit, and then I'll come back and talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. Alrighty. Like I said, you're not in any trouble. So, just go ahead and take a seat. What's that? Yeah, I just spoke to her. So, you want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. Alrighty. in any trouble right now. So, tell me what's going on. It, the shoes gets worked up sometimes and I try and really distance myself from her so like I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. What, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything so I give her time and I, we, we really had a nice morning with and if anything but um, she just got worked up because we were trying to get going and get her day going because we want to go 
um, like guards just pulling stuff over there. Okay. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had stuff on her hand. That's why I was pushing her away. Because I, she, she wanted. To, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not, you know, go anywhere. Let's just calm down for a minute. She's going to work up. And then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys. Through, so I got away. I was just trying to. I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go. Let's let's just take a minute, step back, and breathe. And you see, she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. That's from a wire? Yeah. You want to tell me about hitting that curb? Hitting the curb was her grabbing the wheel. Did she grabbed the wheel? Yeah. She said, I can't believe you're getting pulled over, and then she grabbed the wheel. What about the speed? Did she take over the, did she no, take I over the pedal on you? I was going fast, I'm sorry. No, it was probably just the, the moment of like, I'm still shaking now. The adrenaline seeing the lights flashing up, and then her grabbing the wheel. And, so if I sped up, I'm sorry about that. What about speeding beforehand? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it took quite a bit to catch up to you. So, yeah. I'm sorry about that. We're just going into the, the park again to get water because we have a six gallon water container to uh -huh. fill up. So we're just getting water to fill a hike. Okay. And we're just, I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because there's plans still to go for a hike, but it's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Of course, of course. Do me a favor. You want to go ahead and just take a seat right over here on the curve sure. for me? And if I was speeding, I'm sorry. Well, apologies. You don't have anything in my pocket or anything like that, do you? Okay. Nope. Just the yeah. wallet? All right. And then, do you mind lifting your shirt so I can check the waistband? I got turn around for me real quick. Perfect. Nothing. I just, I just no, want I to make you. sure. That's all, man. Go ahead, do me a favor, take a seat. All right. All right. Oh, do you have your ID on you? In the car. If you want to come with me, no, I'll no, we'll just do this. Just go ahead and take a seat. If you come with me, I'll give it to you. All right, you're fine. Uh, what's your first name? Brian. Brian. Is that a language spelling? B R I N. Yeah, and L A U N. And then your last name? L A U N. L A U N. D R I E. D R I E. Yep. Laundry. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your date of birth, Brian? Can I? Just, I'll say crisscross applesauce. But can I just sit in the shade because I'm bald? Um. I'll, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'll give you some shade. <laughs> Sound good? Alright, just hang tight for me. SO229. I need a 29 name and date of birth. First name Brian, layman spellings, last name Laundry, Lima Alpha Uniform, November, Delta, Romeo, India. Bravo, Romeo, India, Alpha, November. And then what? His reaction was to do what? It's gonna be out of Florida. He just grabbed you. Did he? Did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him. I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth. If he actually hit you, because you know, where did he hit you? Don't no, worry. Be honest. Do you slap your face or what? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So has he been drinking? No, we don't drink. What was up with his driving? I saw that he said he hit a curb. I I I while you're driving? While he was driving, you were hitting him? Did Jordan tell him all this? I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was she was hyperventilating she's a little saying bit. That they don't drink, but at the point when you lit them up. You don't trigger anything. I, she I was, hitting yeah, it. I was yelling at him, and then when and you turned your lights on, I like kind of fucked his arm. Like there's no, just no she said she's saying it was like hit the curb. You said it was, it was Gabby. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really bad. It was Gabby. Yeah.
to try to meditate and stuff, but you tend to have a lot of anxiety and stress. <laughs> a lot of anxiety. And what's his name? Is it Brian? Is he usually pretty patient with you? Way of taking my anxiety and bringing it down, but my ex-wife, this is my ex-wife, I'm just sharing, I know it's a little personal, but to help you understand, we would feed off each other's anxiety and spiral, you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how much I loved her, it may be a bad for your soul, the same. And I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but if you know you have anxiety, look at the, look at the situations you can get in, you know what I mean? <laughs> And we're not here to be mean to you or anything. Well, you, you know, they never. There's a first time, and then it usually. Let's just we'll go see what Brian's saying. But I, I think you've heard everything now. From you quick question, you said you were hitting him in the arm. Did you grab the steering wheel? No, I didn't. You did not touch, I the, didn't steering touch the steering wheel. But uh, only, only, only for like a second because I just saw the lights come on, and it was more just like you're an idiot, like you know. But did you grab the steering wheel and like no. swerve or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close this door again. Do you have enough air back here or do you want me to kick it up some more? Do you have any water? <laughs> I will see if I can find some. Okay, no worries. Thank you. You wouldn't have to have any water, would you? Oh, yeah. Can I get a bottle? Awesome. Did you already give a statement for this officer? Uh, I got nice. this the gentleman here. Yeah. This gentleman noticed that you had some marks on your She's got some marks on her too. We're just trying to figure out what all happened. And I know you probably already told your story. This officer is probably going to be the one handling the whole case. Do you want to, do you want to listen to what he has to say? And, yeah. And then you tell him. Tell him what happened. So, if you don't mind. Start at the beginning for me. Over. Start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to go too far back. But we've been in uh, Beyond Land for the past like, week or so traveling okay. around. And the flies here are like, pretty intense. So the flies have definitely been getting to her. And then my feet are dirty and everything. So I think that our little squabble started because we were, we were hanging out at the coffee shop. And when I got back to the van, there was some dirt and stuff in the van. And uh, I moved our food around as a result of this So she gets a little. Will you take those? Sorry about that. It's okay. Do you need any water? That's okay. It's hot out here. I was right? down we were going to get water because we ran out. But I it's okay. Some no, it's all right. I don't like plastic bottles. It's okay. Thank you, though. Okay. Um, but we just had a little disagreement there. And the disagreement was just that she was getting a little worked up and I was saying, no, it's okay, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's cool, that's good. <laughs> um, so it was, just, it was just more of a disagreement and I just wanted to What was the this. disagreement about? It was, it was, I wouldn't even call it disagreement. It was just that I'm dirty and I can't change being dirty. Like I got dirty feet, I got sand in my flip and stuff like that. Um, it was that we were at the coffee shop for so long because we were there from nine to so I guess there's a few little little things, little just little mm. relationships. I don't know if you have a relationship with them. I've been married for over five years now. So. There's a lot of little things. Right? Yeah. yeah, I can go. Um, and we, I get we, it. Yeah. We really, it was, we weren't physical before the point where I said, all right, let's let's just take a breather and, and like walk away for a minute. I'll lock the van up and I'll go for a walk this way, and you can go walk that that way in the block. You know, there's okay. a moon. Uh, I wanted to come moonflower. Right, yeah. yeah, nice areas. You can go either way, it's all shaded. So let's just go for a little walk and breathe and come back. It's pretty yeah, we're happy with it. Um, but it, but she's, I saw, I'm not upset with her. But she got a little worked up and she had a phone in her hand and her keys and everything. And she wanted, I met her keys, like her rings. She mm had -hmm. rings, her phone. And I, I was holding on to the keys because I just, I didn't want to go anywhere. And my big fear is, I, mean, I don't have my phone, I don't really, I don't have a phone. So she goes off without me. The car, I, I'm on my own. <laughs> so uh, I was saying, let's just go for a walk. And she was trying to get the keys for me. So I was just going, hey, just wait back up, back up. And that's when she hit me. And I, I did, didn't get, I don't want to push you, but I didn't get, very, I didn't get overtly physical. I was just trying to keep her away and, and not get hit. And then I got really loud. And like, that's probably if you're ever attention where I was going, you know, back up, get away, just give me a. Okay, okay so, so you I, said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, yeah. right? What happened after that? What got. Look at the scratches on your eye. The phone. The phone. Mm -hmm. So you push her and she hit you. She was. I wasn't. I, I, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me. She was. She was already. She was already. I don't want to. She's already swinging and I was. Yeah. A lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah. You got. Yeah. 
two scratches on your neck. You've got one on your left side of your neck. You've got one in your face here, and you've got four blood of bleeding over there. So you just try to so, twist up two hands. Do you mind lifting up your right sleeve for me? I'm curious about something. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit of I suppose fingernails, but yeah, I'm not complaining. Absolutely. I'm not complaining about fingernails. Is it bruised or tender or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm fine, and I love that. I, I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I feel bad that I didn't get so public. I was just trying to be loud to this and this is, you know, I just try to make her calm down and be like, look, everyone's watching. And I'm like, it's not this. <laughs> Thank you, Typhoon. Whenever the lights flash on, it, it gets your heart rate up. If I see my trust me, it does me too, and I'm the one. Throwing them <laughs> on. It yeah. gets me going a little bit. You probably bit can too say, "Hey, fun. buddy," whenever somebody walks up. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah, do you know if she takes any? She's, she's, she's crazy. No, <laughs> no, um, no, I don't think so. no, no, none that I know of. Real fast, can I get your first name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle, how do you spell that? G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. And your last name? Peter. P-E-T. P-E-T? Uh, P is in Peter. Oh, oh, P. M-E-T-I-T. I see. Oh. guys both live in Florida, right? Or that's where you guys My come from? My license is Florida right now, but I'm from Florida. But that's where you have it out of currently. That's like 1509. I need a 29 if I need my date of birth. First name, Gabrielle. Golf, Alpha, Bravo, Romeo, India, Echo, Lima, Lima, Echo. Last name, Tico. Mm -hmm. Papa, Echo, Tango, India, Charlie, Oscar. Washington, then down to Oregon, and then down to 
What part of California is that? I'm from a town just outside Sequoia National Park. Uh, if you, you're going to be going through this, <laughs> yeah. we'll get it good in the way back to Go ahead. But no, it wasn't too bad at all. trying to lock her out of the vehicle. She even told us that he was trying to lock her out, told her to go take a walk. Mm -hmm. So that she was trying to get in. She eventually couldn't get in and actually clawed her way in through the driver's door. He says, I don't understand why she's doing that. Well, I think it's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she could get through. Mm -hmm. so she's trying to get in over him. He's trying to disengage from her. I guess he hung her backpack on the back probably so she'd have her shit so that he didn't have to engage with her. Everything she's saying is same thing, I haven't heard what he said, but if that's what he said, it's also what the witness is saying. The witness says, I never saw him hit her, I saw him shove her, but I couldn't tell if it was an aggression against her or a defense against her, as far as her, you know, being the aggressor. So at this point, from what, unless the guy's screaming that he needs to go to jail and did something to this girl, it sounds to me like she is the primary aggressor. Yeah. Now, the problem with her being the primary aggressor is in an incidence of domestic assault, be it a male or be it a female, we shall arrest. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to go to jail. We can do a citation if it meets one of three criterion, which one of them is that we can ensure that they're not going to um, further risk each other's safety. But the problem with that is they live in the same vehicle. That's what I was going to say. The and other part of it is... There was actually I'm, I'm an getting... injury to, to the victim, which is him. Right, and I'm getting conflicting stories about why they hit the curb up here. I what did he say why he hit the curb? Well, I've watched, this is what I saw first. I saw him cross the double yellow. I was doing 42 miles an hour. I was, I don't know, probably two car lengths behind him, tapping my whales at him, trying to get his attention. They knew I was behind him. And then after he crossed the double yellow, he merged over into the right lane, and then out of nowhere, just boom, and he hit the curb. So did he tell you why? He said that she grabbed the wheel and turned it real hard. She said that she was hitting him in the arm. So Sounds legit. I mean, I'm sure she, if I'm driving and my arm's on the wheel and I'm getting hit in the arm, I'm probably pulling out the wheel. Yeah. And I'm sure it was a little of both. I mean, usually the truth is somewhere between. He's probably trying not to say that he hit her because he probably doesn't want her charged with assault, yeah. domestic assault. He probably would rather say she pulled the wheel than hit, hit him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Fortunately for her, she we, we cannot treat just because he's bigger and stronger, and even if he's not willing to press charges, we case. can't treat this differently than if it was a male on female violence. Yeah. And we're going to have to charge her, and um, we can do a citation if there's some arrangement that can be made to separate them. And then we have to let them know that there's no contact order in effect. Yeah. And we have to let him know the only way to drop it is to go into the police department during business hours and fill out a waiver. Which, by the way, what's it's today? Too late Thursday. Today. So it won't be till tomorrow. I know it's there till noon, I think. Yeah. Which well, I'm sure he's going to want to drop it. Well, the other part of it is they said that they're on a. They've been on four or five months that they've been living out of this van together. Well, this is really bad news. Let's talk to him first. Yeah. Is Brian? Yeah. Did you, did you ask him yet to take pictures of him? Yeah. No, I haven't so, done any of that yet. Brian, unfortunately, in the state of Utah, we don't have discretion on some things. Like, for example, if I pull you over for speeding and I want to give you a warning, I can do that because it's under Class A, it's a Class B or under. If I want to give you warnings for all kinds of stuff, I can. But there's a few things I can't. Like, when I say I, please, I'm not in trouble. Yeah, right. One of the things that the state legislature doesn't give us discretion on is charges when it comes to a domestic assault. And it sounds like you guys are living together, so you, you meet the statute for domestic partners. And you do have injuries. Both an independent witness, probably the next one we're going to talk to as well, which we haven't talked to yet, but one the ones we did talk to, and your own companion, have made it clear that she was the primary aggressor, and that she was striking you and you just received injuries. You have admitted to striking her, she has not admitted to striking her, the witness did not see you strike her. So at this point, you're the victim of a domestic assault, and even, if you, <laughs> even if you didn't want to pursue this, we don't have a choice. The best thing we can do 
to not, the loss that we have to charge with doesn't say we have to put her in jail, okay? But it also says we have to separate through a no contact order, and we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And there's a little problem here, you guys are not afford to live in the bed together. How are we supposed to separate her guys? Now, I don't want to take this small 20, what is she? Yeah, a 22 year old, 22 year old blonde female hair, jail, blue eyed jail. You could definitely defend yourself against, but at the same time, we can't say because you're a male and she's a female, we can't treat this different than if you were the male hitting her. Or if you got treated the same. Yeah, no. So she's kind of in a tough spot. So unless you have an idea about how she could not go to jail and be separated, you have friends in town, somewhere she could stay. Tomorrow, if you want to, it's up to you. you can, can I go, go to jail? You can't because you don't have a charge for you. Now tomorrow, if you wanted to, you get with her again tomorrow. I'm going to take your radio. If you wanted to, if you <laughs> want to be with her again tomorrow, because it's after five, so off is close, you can go to the police department and fill out a waiver to drop the no contact order so you guys can still be together, which is going to have a court date online. So you should have to show up for a court date online and answer. The prosecutor might drop it. She might say, you it. for example, if you're not willing to pursue it, that's your decision. I mean, it, 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 it definitely is, I'm not going to pursue anything. It's not going to say I love her, it's what's probable. I'm sorry that I had to get so public. Um, but uh, uh, so I just want to get like the checklist of things I got to do to get rid of this. So, so you know, I'm back. Date. Well, she'll get a paper with a court date. Right? How do I get rid of it? <laughs> well, the court date has to be attended in order for them to decide whether they need to continue or drop it. The first is just an initial appearance to say, are you who we think you are? Yes. The, do you understand the charges that's been brought against you? Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer. Uh, do you have an attorney? Yes or no? Do you need one? And then from there, she can she can ask to speak to the prosecutor. The prosecutor might be contacting you. And say, hey man, I, I see 110 pounds soaking wet and you're a big strong guy. And we understand you're not even wanting to pursue this when the cops have to call the statute. How you like, what, what, in the interest of you and justice for you, the victim, what do you think? And they can decide to pursue the prosecutor. Or they can decide to drop it, or they can decide to give her a plea and make it kind of go away and she can hurt somehow. But that still has, does not eliminate the first court appearance. So she has to attend, which thankfully for you guys is going to be online. You don't have to. So if you're out of town, so here's the thing, if you're out of town and she doesn't come into a court appearance online, they can suspend the driver's license, they can issue a warrant for her. So she needs to play ball. Yeah, yeah. Does that no. make sense? Yeah. And we're over a team, me and her and her team, I'm sorry about all this, I want to apologize again. But, so she's got her online court date, just uh, Acknowledge that she's hurt, and if she's got the one or the. Well, we, there's automatically right now there's something called a no contact order in place. Yeah, From this point yeah, forward, yeah. until tomorrow, if you wish to drop it, you have to go to the 217 East Center Street, Monsey Police Department. I got all the papers. And you have to ask them to give it to you. If you want to fill out a waiver, then you're requesting a, wa a waiving of the contact order, no contact order. No contact order means she cannot come into contact with you, she cannot talk to you, she cannot text you. Go on to any premises to drop your mind. You gotta go to the people. And until you drop that, or until a court date, if you don't drop it, it'll stay in effect until midnight on day of court. And then that gives you time to get a protection to protect the order, a long term one, if you feel like you need one. It sounds like you don't even want this one. So tomorrow, they open at 8, you can go into the police department, you can call the waiver, they can remove it, then you can say, hey babe, where you at? Let me pick her up. And you can pick her up. Now, we're hoping not to put her in jail, but if she doesn't have somewhere to go tonight, be separate from you, then where are we supposed to I can't talk to her now because it's separation, right? Yeah. So, tell me this. Do you guys have enough money for like a hotel room or anything like that? Because what we could do is we'd cite her for this, and then I'd give her a ride over to whatever hotel you guys is choosing. Pick up there tomorrow if you want you, to know what they On your way to go pick her up, you stop over there at the PD, sign the paperwork that they're requesting, and then you can go pick her up quite literally. Unless you know someone else in town that's a friend that you can stay with. Yeah. You know, unfortunately you're not, I, I don't, and I guess that... Man, I sure hate to... I don't want her to go to jail. Well, it'd be... If she goes to jail, it's like, uh... It, it, that, that goes down somewhere, instead of her going to a hotel, right? If you get um, the citation... It, it kind of depends, so if she goes to jail, they're going to book her. They're going to take her fingerprints, yeah. they're going to go out in front of and then if they, if, if they don't convict her, then it will just show that it was dismissed on criminal history. It show up in criminal history, but the charge was dismissed. If she was found guilty, it will show up that she was guilty of criminal history. But the charge, will, the charge itself will show up on her criminal history until she gets to expunge. Now, even if we give her a ticket, we're still going to take a fingerprint and it's still going to show up. Either way, it's still going to show up. She, the 
there's no way around a class A. Or is this class B? This is class B. But Simple. they do require fingerprint on it. Yeah. Okay, so the other part is, is if you contact her or she contacts you, she can be charged with a class A. Well, which is a little bit different, but it doesn't come to If you were to contact her and she responds to you, then she can get a new charge yeah. for violating her. No contact order doesn't restrict you, it restricts her. So if you go talk to her and we find out and you're not in trouble, she should be in trouble. So it's going to be two interesting. Does that all make sense? No, I'm getting it all. It's a lot. I really quick. No, no, I yeah, understand. I'm getting it all. I'm just trying to figure out a way through. You don't know anyone in town? You guys been here out long? No, I don't know anyone in town. If she went... She... Oh, I don't think she can. I'll take her to the aggressor. No. There's a window shelter. I'm curious. You can find out. Say, hey, she doesn't have to go. If you did the citation, she, like, say she drove off and she could drive off in this car. We could give you a ride somewhere. So I got my backpack. So it's for you. I got my backpack. You can spend I, the night. You want to drive me to Delicate Art? Does she have a good driver's license? Yeah, she's here. Yeah, she has a driver's license. Yeah. So yeah. if you would do vehicle, yeah, she can help. Yeah. Then you'd kind of be homeless for the night. Not and I mean, I can't talk to her at all. Well, and I've got to do the, the thing so I can't go camping. We can tell her what it is that she needs to do to get, to get through all this and then let her know what the plan is. Here, here's the problem though. If we take you up to Delicate Arch, you're going to be hoofing it from Delicate Arch all the way down to Moab Center Street so that you can yeah. fill out that paperwork because if you're not there by noon tomorrow, you're going to be looking at Monday morning. It's uh, early on Friday. So yeah. You, you'd be looking at Monday morning before you could actually see her right again. Again, we're not trying to make your life hard, but this is written the statute. There's nothing yeah, a lot of people about it. It's designed to protect victims of domestic assault. Not everybody's the same. This is different yeah. than normal, but we have to treat everything the same. That's how it is. It's not easy can't afford a hotel. No? All right. Very, very, very little money we have, for sure. Um, you want me to I'll call CK then? See if CK will take you for the night. I'll see if they'll, if they'll take you or one of them. Because then we can figure it out for something. CK will take me. Oh. Uh, yeah, actually, CK will take yeah. him as a victim of domestic assault. CK will take him, and they yeah. will help you tomorrow. And you're like a block and a half away from the PK. Let's see if okay. CK will take him because they took, they actually put up, actually, they didn't take a guy, but they got a hotel for a guy last time. Yeah, I'll do that. CK we might get you a hotel. Okay. Now, what she does, I'm, I'm happy sleeping outside in the sleeping bag. No, 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 CK, like, I don't no, need no, a hotel. Don't I'm, I'm just will, saying, I, I think CK will get you a hotel. If you want her to have a van. Yes, this is Officer Robbins with Homer City Police Department. How are you doing this afternoon? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. So, I just did a domestic and the male is going to be our victim. Is there any way that you can help us set him up with a place to stay tonight? Okay. 1099, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Well. The after hours guy isn't there at their office right now. He's gonna run from his house over there and we're gonna get y'all lined up. Don't worry about it, this is the phone call that they wait on. So don't don't feel like you are making anybody do anything extra on your behalf. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible. We're not wanting to take her and book her or anything like that. No, I really, really appreciate it. And I know how rough this stuff can be. Like I said, I've been married for five and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe me, if I were to say that me and my wife haven't had our share of spouts, I'd be lying to you. She lives with anxiety. I live with a woman. No, both of this is really. I know. Yeah. I, her anxiety elevates my yes. anxiety, and sometimes it that's just. That's why I just. That's why I'm like. Sometimes I gotta, it just. I gotta walk away. I gotta breathe. Just and look in the back far as you can then. You know. But I'm not gonna try and sit here and give you life. No, my no. Advice. <laughs> yeah. You've been on this road. <laughs> almost as long as what I have. There's nothing I can tell you that's gonna really make a difference, but at the end of the day, I, I'm sorry that um, this has happened. I'm sorry that it went to this extent. No, no, no. I'm sorry to... Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I get my key and make like a little bag? Maybe you can grab me something? Yeah. Is that all right? Would you mind watching for me? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, if you don't mind doing it from over here, we don't want you to get hit in the road. Okay. So, thank you. Like this. 
That, that's fine. I'm, I'm still going to be here for a few minutes dealing with this, so we have almost as much time as you need. <laughs> so, his name's going to be Brian, B-R-I-A-N, last name Laundry is L-A-U-N-D-R-I-E, and Laundry. Yeah, well, it's not why, it's IE at the end. Yes. So they were at one at Moonflower, the organic grocery store down the street from you guys, and they got into a heated argument. Both of them were saying it was over petty stuff. Um, he told her to take a walk so that she could cool off. She refused, broke into the car after he locked her out of it. She started trying to slap and scratch him. He pushed her away. They both got in the vehicle, took off, and I found him out here next to him. Which is... charging her with uh, domestic assault. So they, there's going to be a protection order set in place between the two of them until he's able to get over to the PD tomorrow because he doesn't want to pursue it, but I don't have a choice in this, as I'm sure you are well aware. So he's going to be wanting to go over to the PD first thing tomorrow morning as they open up to get the protective order removed. But that doesn't fix tonight. They both have Florida licenses. Of course. suspect in this, would you be able to put her up for the night? Okay. I figured, I figured, I just, I had to make sure I at least asked. It's better safe than sorry. So, I didn't know if that would make your life any easier or any tougher on it, so... Awesome. And if you 
if it's easier for you to just send me a text with a location, that works just as fine. Alright, it sounds like fun. Thank you. What was your, what did you say your name was again? Peter Phillip? Phil. Okay. Alrighty, Phil. We'll talk to you later. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Can I take two minutes of your time real quick back here? So, because there was an assault that took place and you were obviously showing signs of the strikes, do you mind if I take pictures of the injuries that you sustained? I know it's not super severe. I mean, you want, me, you want me to call, I mean, I can call the EMS if you want me to. You don't seem like you want to, to go no, that far. If you want to take a photo, you can take a photo. Of it. Yeah, I, I need to take pictures for my evidence because otherwise it's going to be your say, her yeah. say, my say, and the court's going. Oh, so I have to do this part of it. All right. So it's just going to be a couple of pictures. Is she okay? Yes. Yeah, microphone. Do you know yeah, where it is? Yeah. Okay. Without the telephone, where yeah, is just it? Yeah, go ahead and tell me. Yeah, go ahead and tell me if you don't mind me crashing. I can grab it because it's like it's in a spot. Why don't I go with you? Where are we going oh. in the car? Right. Right face. Yeah. One of his uh, one of his ring fingers, I think, has got a scratch on the face. And you, you saw her later. Yeah, yeah, I saw the ring. Well, I was trying to build some consistency between the stories. Oh, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. All right. And then let me see your hand because that. I know you said this is from a wire, but I'm going to take a picture of it just in case and I'll document that yeah, you're saying that's from a wire, not from her. It's just I want to document everything. You know what I mean? And then you're right. Um, do you have anything on the other arm, on your back, chest, anything like that? Let me get your neck real quick as well. Do you want to kind of tilt your head off to the right and look up? This way? And then look up. There you go. I don't know. I mean, this is just for precautions. Do you mind lifting your shirt for me? We can go back here if you want some privacy. I just, I want to, like I said, I want to do a very thorough job. I want to make sure that you don't have any additional injuries you don't need to know about. I don't know how I do. I'm good. Do you mind here? Put your collar down for me a little bit. On the other side. All right. That works. So, I talked to my contact over there at people that can help with hotel rooms and stuff like that are out of the office and just playing home type of a couple of people trying to get well lined up because certain people have access to the corporate card, he doesn't. So we're trying to get everything lined up. This is going to take us a few minutes to get that lined up, get her cited uh, and stuff like that. Like I said, we're going to be handing her a piece of paper that has a court summary and state, stuff like that, and she'll be able to give you all that information. Well, yeah. You want to go ahead and finish getting your stuff with yeah. this check? Fine, gentlemen. Uh, she's got her cell phone. She's calling her parents just to feel better. She doesn't want to not be with them today. There's That's no choice in the matter. Yeah. So. So parents, that's what she's calling the senior life or at least it's being said.
Brian. Got a swollen right eye, scratches. So we gotta go find it. Was it intent and attempt, or intent or? very important question. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. <laughs> Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were no. you... What were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to come in. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. This is 100% your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your parents, okay? Okay. Bodily injury, the definition says, bodily injury is 
infliction of pain or a physical impairment or illness. So you can go. This, now I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. Be, I'm recording, and society and the judges and everyone can can judge me for this. I am looking at a 110 pound female and her fiance who have no means to be separated. He doesn't want to pursue it. She's not a threat to him. More than slight abrasions from her fingernails. I I don't care if if we use the actual letter of the law to to not charge, but. I also don't care because it literally does possibly make perfect sense to go full on domestic assault and do the whole thing. This is uh, your opportunity to make the decision. Let's. This? I'm making this decision. I'm gonna side on it. I'm gonna go okay. all through the first. Would you feel more comfortable here. handling that guy? Yeah. We'll handle that guy. Okay. Handle that guy. Handle that guy. If you're more comfortable. Well, I'm. It's six one way, half dozen the other. I mean, it's a headache whether I go left or it's a headache whether I go Look, right. Another option is to not charge them but separate them through the night. If they find themselves together again, what is it to you? You separated them. You provided for his safety. If he doesn't have enough sense to stay away and you, you got him separated, it's on him. You can separate him and say, don't, don't let us cool off till tomorrow. If, if they don't let it cool off and we hear about it, we'll hear about it. They're camping in the park tonight, they're looking up. And if there's some fighting going on, you already was Mr. Nice Guy. You already gave him a chance. What you can't do, by law, is separate someone and say, if we hear from you again, we're going to arrest one of you. Because then if one of them really needs help, they may not call police and get help. The law says you cannot, literally, you may not say, we get more problems with you guys tonight. One of you is going to, you can't threaten like that. Right. It's true because it stops them from wanting to call the police to get help. Does that make sense? Right. So, go full or nothing or in between and separate them and kind of give them the nod, the wink, like, hey, you know, just stay separate. It's up to you. I'm going to go handle that. You got very capable help with you here, and I trust you. Mm -hmm. I will. Alrighty, man. So we're still gonna be going through. I do need some things from you though. Do you mind if I get a picture of your driver's license? Yeah. I was thinking it was in the parts like that. This is me. Uh oh. I don't know if this man is here. <laughs> you said that this is still your mailing address, right? Mm -hmm. Still the right way. Alright, and then... Ryan, what is your call number? Hey, Fawcett, thank you guys for helping us. Oh yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Uh, about, about the phone number?
it, it should just be in the, uh, like, Zion. Okay, do you have any problems with me taking a picture of it? I have to have IDs and stuff like that for my investigation. Okay. Here. So, this is what I'm going to do. I've decided I am not going to cite you for domestic violence battery, okay? It was only going to be a mm -hmm. Class B misdemeanor. However, the domestic violence portion of it enhances it, makes like a major pain in the butt, especially at your 22, right? So I'm choosing not to cite you today. So you are not going to be charged with it. Alright? But this is what I do have to do. I am separating between you tonight. Okay? I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other, relax, breathe. Because there's no reason to be crying now, okay? This is... I understand that this can feel like it's a nightmare. But you're coming out as the golden flower on top of it, okay? So, you're going to be taking the van tonight. And you're going to go somewhere else. I am going to get him lined up for the hotel room tonight. I want you guys to stay away from each other. For both of you guys the same from what you told me and what he told me, you guys have a bunch of little things that are building up, building up, building up, and finally the little string that you guys were tight walking on for tonight. Does that sound about right? So, I just want everybody to breathe, get a chance away from each other, go eat a meal, talk to your parents, whatever it is you gotta do. Yeah. So, like I said, that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Hold on. This is Officer Robbins. Up. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Is this your cell phone that I called? Okay. Okay. Well, I, go ahead and save my number into that phone, and I'll save your number, or this number, into my phone. That way I can contact the on-duty, on after-hours person. So... Because I, I literally had to Google it, so... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate your time. Alright. So, I've got him a hotel room tonight. So, here in just a minute, I have to keep you guys separated. For right now, don't contact each other. Don't wave at him. Okay. Do you want me to say anything to him? Because I can do that for you. You want me to let him know that you love him and that you'll see him tomorrow and stuff like that? I can do that Make for sure you. Make sure he doesn't forget a phone charger. Definitely good. Oh, he's bad about that too? Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure that he has a phone charger. Okay? <laughs> and if I have anything else, please keep your cell phone on so I can call you if I have any questions. Alright? Okay. Alright. So just kind of sit tight for me real fast and I'm going to talk to you right now. All right, Brian, a couple things. A couple things? A couple things. One, I got your hotel room tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's All right. Outside. So, I like outside. <laughs> number two, and this is probably the biggest one. She claims that she did not have intent to hurt you when she was slapping at you. So, technically speaking, it does not fit the letter of the code. So... I am not going to be charging her with 
TV. That's a balance. Exactly. So, this is what I am going to do, however. I'm not going to release you guys together. I want you guys to stay away from each other tonight. Okay? She's agreed to it. Take some time for yourselves. You guys both have the exact same story as to what led up to the incident. So, taking some time tonight, I specifically. Really it. Taking tonight away from each other is going to be the major breaker in all of this. I think that'll help you guys, especially tomorrow when you guys meet up. So she does have a couple of messages for you. One, she says she loves you. She wants, she's looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Two, don't forget a cell phone charger. Yeah, good. He watched me fumble around the entire three laps around the car to find one. Did yeah, I find one? Find one. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is, is I don't want you guys to contact each other. No, okay. I, unless, I was unless to, when, he, when he news. said that I uh, that she gonna text me or whatever, I was gonna send her messages. Said, Please don't message me. But, I love well, but yeah, but, but tonight, yeah, tonight, don't do anything. Yeah. And I'm with She's you. passing on her love and saying good night and stuff like that. All that and the stuff that I do to my wife too. Okay. So I appreciate it coming. Just, you. just. <laughs> <laughs> so don't. Just try to not contact each other unless, like I said, Go on. first chattering, something happens, you guys have to jump in the car right now and drive back to Florida because something happened to parents. That kind of circumstance. Yeah, you don't. Exactly. Other than that, just mm -hmm. have meals about yourself, catch your breath. You're going to be in a hotel room watching TV. It's probably been a few months since you actually got to sit down and relax in some air conditioning and watch TV. So, take some time for yourself. Yeah, 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 take a shower, man. You, you got to change the clothes. You got some Tonys in there, right? All right, good, good, good. Because they're going to have everything that you need to ship the camera and all that good stuff. All right? Our main concern is make sure that you have a cell phone card so you guys can go on. Okay? I really appreciate So, I am going to add Walker over here to the car. Okay? And if you'll just go stand over here in front of his pickup real quick, we'll get her out of here and I'll be right over here. All right? You can get right here. Absolutely. Alrighty, Gabrielle, you want to step out for me? As you can see, I have keys in my hand, which is good, okay? okay? So, something that I do, that I emphasize to him, and I don't know if I emphasize to you or not, don't text each other tonight. He wants to pass on the same message you passed to him. He's really looking forward to talking to you again, but I told him, and you, unless there's earth-shattering emergency news, don't text tonight, okay? Even with the good nights, I love you. He's saying good night now. He's saying he loves you now. And you guys can talk tomorrow morning, okay? He's gonna go to the hotel. I'm gonna give you the keys to the van. I'm gonna what you all have. Alrighty. So, here's that. I'm giving him a ride over to the hotel, okay? So, everything's gonna be okay. Will it be a far drive for me to get him in the morning? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not going to tell you where he's going to be at I, tonight. I like I said, I, I want you guys to be separated. I, but I, I can just, tell you this. I just don't usually drive the van, so I just want to make sure it's not like far. No, 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 okay. no, no. It's, uh, okay. it, it's basically from here to Moonflower. Okay. Okay. It's not far at all. So, let's get you in the van. Let's get you on your way. All right? Do you want that Gatorade, by the way? Okay. You got enough water? <laughs> also, something I want you to know. Here, stand over here real, for, real fast for me. If you go over to City Market, they have a list of places where you can get yourself a shower for like four or five bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap. A place where you can shower, decompress, de-stress a little bit. Alrighty? Um, yeah, I just showered yesterday at one of those. Well, you didn't have today happen yesterday, so yeah, but, I, I, it does my wife would, wonders. So when she gets stressed out, it's like, get in the shower. Come on, it does get in the shower. Really relaxing. Go take a shower, relax, take some time for yourself. And like I said, don't text each other tonight. Text each other tomorrow morning after your eyes open up and you're fully awake. Have your coffee or your morning routine, okay? All right, Jenna. You have a good night, okay? Alright, alright. 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 Alright, Daniel, by the way, if I didn't no. formally introduce myself, I'm Daniel on 229, so if you hear that, I know you're not going to be 223, Ryan. See, I hear you guys all the time. I've heard that this is too much. So, what's your first name? Daniel. Daniel. It was nice to meet you guys. Let's see that. What's that?
been a Rob Zombie. You like it? I was wondering if you get to play your own personal music in the Heck yeah, dude. I got my own oh, phone hooked up to this thing. You just jam it all day? Yeah. Hey, man, it's not it's too hard to go a few hours without having anything interesting happen or anything to get the old blood pumping real good, you know what I mean? So. I stuck my hands up because I didn't want to scare you when you pulled over. Oh, no, no, you're... The thing that wasn't a traditional stop, to say the least, so uh, don't feel bad. SO2T9. didn't already know. Um, she did want to pass on her good nights and loves yous and stuff like that, okay? And she understands that I don't... I didn't tell her where you're staying because, like I said, I'm trying to keep you guys away from each other for tonight. Where did you say I was going? Say that again? Uh, where did you say I was going? The, I didn't... I just told her that you were going to a hotel. Okay? So, um, like I said, it's my request not legally obligated to hold to it, but I want you guys to take some time away from each other because it will make a no world idea. of difference. Oh, you're not in any trouble? You got handcuffs on? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you that I'm taking you to the jail. No, I told you I'm taking <laughs> to the hotel. So, like I said, my main concern, I told her to go take a shower like I told you to, because she seems a lot like my wife, and things that really works for my wife is when she gets stressed out to go take a long hot shower so I gave her a place to go where she can get a hotel room or not a hotel room but um get a shower tonight for like four or five bucks really cheap so no problem <laughs> well, I've got quite a few like I said my wife has really really bad bad anxiety and she takes medication for it daily and Sometimes it's just not enough. Sometimes it builds up and it, it happens. I mean... Well, I will say this. When my wife got put on a medication, within a week, I saw a complete turnaround in her attitude, her demeanor. I mean, she wasn't nearly as aggressive or angry or anything like that. It was, it was a considerable difference in her day-to-day -day life. It, it made her quality of life better even. You know what I mean? No, I, I know what and it's made my quality of life a lot better too, <laughs> because I don't have her being as stressed. I know that I, Five and a half years of marriage, I know it's not very long, but at the same time, you learn a lot in the first five years. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Uh, I, would, I would say, well, we've known each other since the start of high school. But, you know, in our relationship, it's been three or four years. Wow. Well, a little while. So definitely the five months of travel together. I've been like three, but we're also like right on top of each other. I used to, I used to drive a truck. I used to be a commercial motor vehicle driver, you know, the big trucks. Oh, yeah? And I took my wife with me, and we would easily spend a couple months on end without going home or anything like that, being cooped up in a little 8x8 cage, is what I called it, because you, you didn't have any time to yourself, so to speak. You didn't have time to, you know, you're going through Arizona, you can't just turn off the road and go see the Grand Canyon or anything like that. So... Well, that was one of the major advantages of having her with me was I could say, hey, I'm hungry. Can you get me something to eat? She, she was able, because I was driving and she wasn't, she was able to go back, get into the cooler, make us lunch or whatever, you know. So there was that as an advantage. If ever think that it's better to do this before, I always go, I think you're wrong. I think it's not better to do it. makes like easier. Yeah. I've lived here, I'm just shy of two years living out here, but my grandfather's lived out here for like 40. 
So I've been through here a couple of times. But, you know, growing up in California, have you ever been there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, two years ago, we did a cross country trip. And uh, we went to Baja. I love driving the one. I absolutely love it. But. <laughs> We're really looking forward to getting back there. It's beautiful here, but the desert is definitely looking on the forest. Come from like New York and we ate on the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. All trees and waterfalls and rivers, and we come here and it's gone. Well, if you hit the, if you take the 80 across to get into California, it takes you up over Donner Pass and into Sacramento, it, it's not any different at all. But you said you're going to be going up to Oregon to see her grandmother or her grandmother's friend. So you'll be probably, excuse me, you'll probably be coming down the five. You won't be able to tell the difference between California and Oregon up there. Yeah, Except for the awesome. fact that there's going to be a sign that says, Welcome to California. <laughs> but at the same time, since you're going to be coming from the east side of Oregon, you're going to be driving through Oregon and going, There's no difference between Utah. Yeah. It's actually yeah. desert in the southeast corner of Oregon. It's a lot of high desert atmosphere, like what this is. It's not the Red Rock or anything like that, but it's just, there's nothing out there for 120 miles, it seems like. Parks? Look, if you don't hit Sequoia National Park while you're in California, you are doing yourself a disservice. If you don't go and see Yosemite while you're in California, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's like coming to Utah. You come here with the intention of one or two days, and then it turns into a week, and you're like, well, what happened to the time? Yeah, trust me, I get it. <laughs> building the van was so great just because the Nissan Century, if you, if you tried to camp out somewhere, you could camp in like the, the sleepover Walmart type situation. Yeah. But now it's all the other land and it's, it's wherever you want. You're watching shooting stars as you go to bed. It's, it's, it's an obvious example. Yeah, sorry, my radio was going off. But uh, no, Sequoia National Park, there is nothing like it. Gotta see the General Sherman Tree. You gotta go and see uh, Morro Rock and climb to the top. If you like hiking, it's about a mile and a half hike. Well worth it. Awesome. Gotta do it. Um, it's really, really cheap for their tent sites up there. Do you have a, a National Park Service pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, the thing is, the dream is $90, or, no, $80 once, and it's like, you go to three parks, and it already pays for them, you can like, 15 Exactly. Well, the other thing of it is, with that drive, if you go through Yosemite, you'll drop down into Fresno, and then you'll turn off to go to uh, Kings Canyon National Park. If you drive through Kings Canyon National Park, the road literally takes you th through to Sequoia National Park, and the Kings Canyon is actually bigger than the Grand Canyon. Uh, yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. And it is a sight to behold. I'll tell you what. And then, yeah, it takes you straight into Sequoias. And then when you get into, um, I think they call it the, I think they call it Sierra Highway still up there. But you'll take that down and you'll pop up into a town called Three Rivers. It's where I'm from. Terribly far from Sequoia, right? Uh, my house, I think the furthest I lived away from it was like 12 miles from the entrance. Oh, man. There you go. I just hope you don't get motion sickness because it's, it's, I think I counted it out to like 32 hairpin turns and it's about <laughs> 25 miles an hour the whole way up and down. Well, it's very, very slow. It takes about an hour to travel that 30 miles, 35 miles, whatever it is, but it's worth it. Thing, but 
we got We're gonna come in here. We're gonna come up to Tyson. Tyson? Yep. Officer Robin still called for me. He did. Yes. This is Brian Laundry. All right. So he's gonna get you all set up with your hotel room, and he's gonna take care of it from here. Alright, well, alright. So. And like I said, just remember my requests. It'll yeah, make no. I think it'll make a big difference in your guys' next couple of weeks at the very least. I really appreciate it. No Thank problem. you so much. For, for everything. No problem. It's yeah. nice to meet you, Brian. Nice to meet you. Have a good one.